Please deceive me Is that Justin Robert Young Laughing studio Across from me Drinking a beer He's got a cool pack Wait a minute That's uh, the delay Can it be? Justin yeah! Would I have returned oh, in thank the goodness. corporeal form, no longer uh, uh, imprisoned on these digital airwaves? No, I am here in the flesh and bone. Now, wait a minute. That sounds a bit like a familiar voice. If yes. I didn't, if I didn't know better, I would believe uh, that's that, that, that's a certain uh, somebody in a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes, Brian, it is I, R.L. Stripe. I live alone, and I am uh, here to tell you of uh, all of my exploits. <laughs> yeah, would you it. like to hear? Would you have a question for R.L. Stein? I mean, I do. I, I well, mainly. I live alone. Uh, wait, what even? I have never. I have never known the touch of a woman when we are living in the same house well, because I, I, I live alone. It, well, I, I know Otherwise, you... my penis is like the Ronin. Well, the, it the... is. It is moving <laughs> without any kind of allegiance. This... I'm a. I'm a coxman, Brian. Well, uh, I'm R.L. Stein. Sh sh Remember sh the one Goosebumps book? <laughs> are there any Goosebumps fans in the? House. Oh, I think we're all fans of Goosebumps. But I better damn well right. Do you <laughs> remember the one with the werewolf? Yeah, oh, well, yes, indeed. But that I was, was about all the pussy I was getting. I, I was thinking to myself that of all the times of year, this yes. would be the time that you would feel the least alone. Well, it is the spooky season, Brian. Well, that, yeah, and let exactly. me just tell you, these bitches are in heat when it comes to talking to the man himself, R.L. Stein. Well, get, get, they get goosebumps, and I don't want to tell you what I call a goose. Um, well, I, I, I have to imagine that uh, it's a bit awkward, given the fact that uh, your target demographic is, is tweens. Oh, that's what I do for a living. Jesus Christ, Brian. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, in the after hours, it's a different... Oh, if I... If, 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 if I were a baker and I made profitable rolls for a living, right. and I said that I was out fucking everything that moved, would you imagine that my dick would be encrusted with sugar? No, because what I do for a living stays at what I do for a living, and then I take that confidence in my riches, and I find the bitches, and then I go home okay. alone <laughs> in my hot tub, and I smoke poorly rolled blunts and drink dank port. <laughs> now, well, so so, how do you celebrate the big holiday? Uh, I'm talking, of course, about All Hallows' Eve. Well, I'm glad you've asked, Brian, because for 25 years running, I have had a bit of a tradition. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, it all goes back to my first meeting with Scholastic. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're talking about Ted Scholastic back when he was a young upstart. Of course. Well, we were roommates, after all, at Brandeis. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, uh, Ted Scholastic shared his vision. He, oh. Well, he said, I've got money to print books. And I said, whatever, nerd. <laughs> Here's some shit I wrote down on a cocktail napkin before I left to go home. The, you're the last person I'll ever live with because we were roommates, therefore violating the core tenet of this character. I'm just now realizing. Uh, I said, Here's a, it's a concept. It's called... Uh, 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 duck pimples and he said I got one note <laughs> and I said fine we'll go with it and so <laughs> anyway every year on All Hallows Eve I drink a bottle of port and fall down okay <laughs> Now, how does not this in the hot tub? <laughs> Got it. So that's because I drown. <laughs> this is this is on uh, dry land. Uh, yes. So it's... <laughs> no, I take a header into my deep pile carpet, and uh, uh, mm -hmm. I, I after drinking an entire bottle of port by myself, I say uh, 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 a good good evening to you, spirits. <laughs> if you are with me right now. I'm going to do what I call a poor man's seance and look into the carpet and then close my eyes and go to sleep. <laughs> well, it's, it's a, well, how do you contact the spirits then? In my, in my brain. Brian, on All Hallows' Eve, it is when 
the membrane between the living world and the else world is at its thinnest. Oh, what, what, and, and, so, and so as you reach out... At least that's what a shit-faced Amy Tan once said after 14 hours of lovemaking. <laughs> oh my God, I, yes. I guess you did get And busy. then I left. <laughs> Alone. Can't catch me. <laughs> Does anybody... They try, they try, Brian. They That's try what I was wondering. to capture my love. I'd imagine that that by throngs they follow you no. uh, in in the dark when where it's hard to see, and they may need like a, a I don't know torchlight. You think you got good sex? I'm a break bread, so you can be living it up. <laughs> Fuck no. Big pimping, spending cheese. That's what that's what R. L. Stein's doing. Rolling on B L A D S. Rolling. It's just that Jigaban fun fun B and B P I M P B L A D on roller blads. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 I wrote that song, Big Pimpin'. Oh, wait, wait. it was initially in a. It was I. I pitched it to Scholastic as a Goosebumps book, <laughs> and they said, "What the fuck, dude? This is all about big pimping, big Southern rap impresario. How is this going to fit into the Goosebumps library? Uh, Where's, we're gonna sell this to. So I, I sold it to my good friend, the Jigger Man, okay, Jay Z, no. Brian. <laughs> I got it because no. it's about my lifestyle. Uh, I'm sorry." I'm a dank pimp. I, I do I do what I please and I do not give up these cheese. I I know I Keep know R. L. with diamond cuts to freeze them. I know R. L. Stein. I've worked with R. L. Stein. You and have. while you sound and look like him, your mannerisms remind me of somebody I used to work with. I you don't have to be wearing a costume early, air quotes R. L. Stein. Uh, I uh, maybe because you <laughs> definitely were talking about all the drinking and fucking that you do, and yes. how you don't give a fuck. You had a very nihilistic. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is it you, Captain Morgan? <laughs> Hi, Brian. We're bringing back all the characters. <laughs> they were gone for so long, and now they're all back for Halloween. The membrane between no characters and all the characters. This thing is not Halloween. It's me, Captain Morgan. I'm back. <coughs> oh. Well, it's been a great night. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Justin? Dude, it's uh, good to be back. Yeah. Good to be back, man. Good you know, to be back in the back in the cut. A uh, <laughs> uh, lot of people think that there's no difference being in the same room. Yeah, but there is. <laughs> yeah. I can't quite put my finger on it. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. Uh uh man, we uh, uh I mentioned in the pre-show, but I got interviewed by the New York Times. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you uh did you offer to sell them world's greatest con? Said, you I had got, one I, piece of advice I, from the great <laughs> glass. If I were you, I would do what I did. Let's sell my podcast to the New York Times. <laughs> that was your end. You had your end. You were even talking about podcasts, weren't you? I was. I was. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I don't know. I don't know if I'll, I'll make the make the story, but uh, it's about uh, people on Substack, and so. Uh, my uh my my very detailed patreon grievances <laughs> in case you were bored about me talking about percreation billing going away <laughs> imagine when i elevate this wonky beef to the paper of record and the old gray lady has to roll her eyes while i discuss percreation billing uh yeah you know what i agree justin everyone should go to patreon.com slash great nights to, uh, to keep us going you get access to the bones that's double the show every week we had a good one man bonnie came in hot on the oh bones. my god i wish people could have seen i mean i hope the energy translated when she came in barreling around doing donuts around that tree whipping the scarf around it was next level yeah no uh pretty amazing go get that patreon.com slash great night but uh yeah you know there's there's that and then um uh uh you know, I remember there was an old episode of SNL that Ray Romano was hosting and he was talking in the monologue. He's like, like, well, you know, I had kids uh, uh, and a lot of people say 
that once you have kids that your comedy's bad. But I don't think that's true. Do you guys mind if I try out a new joke? Uh, <laughs> and then he's like, like, uh, uh, all right, here's Justin's here's, leaning back. Here's 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 my new joke. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Which for people, it's me shaking my keys and uh, yeah. So I don't know. So that I feel like like it, the one thing that is true about having a a child is that there's uh, there's not a lot of forethought for things. There's a lot of like operating in the moment. I, it's, I'm glad that I'm good at improving things because holy shit, if I was not, this would be a fucking disaster. Because <laughs> it's certainly I'm certainly not getting along because I pre-planned a lot of shit. Uh, well, well so g- g- give us a moment or, or g- give us an instance of that. About not preparing for anything? No, about, just only... uh, no about, about pulling, pulling a fast one and, and oh, pulling it out Oh, just getting all the shit out the door. You know, you'd have, you have uh, like, you know, leaving here today, did two interviews yesterday for the show that's coming out tonight, uh, the PX3 show. Got to do the wraparounds. Got to make sure that I got all the information in for that. And then the last few times that I've released an episode, I've accidentally released the shit that's not supposed to be in the episode, like little notes that I'm supposed to cut out of me saying like fuck or shit or, or this is a mistake or something like that. So, uh, you know, especially at this time of year, you want to keep everything on, on the straight and narrow. So yeah, you do that. You got to do the we're not wrong prep. And then you come on out here for, for, for great night because, uh, no reason at all and uh no, fuck it uh, yeah. let's just tell everyone our good friend well, well i mean i don't know don't promote it if we're not sure that they're gonna show up oh well i don't know when he'll be here but we're gonna hang out yeah we, we it, that's called a radio tease radio ladies and gentlemen tease. this radio episode tease. brought to you by miller light mm-hmm. when uh, you're here for a miller then don't get a heavy <laughs> miller light. light drink it while driving <laughs> I hey, I gotta get from point A to point B like anyone. <laughs> but wait, I also wait. wanna tie one on. Wait. I'm gonna defy laws and drink and drive. <laughs> uh yeah. So uh I guess we got we got plenty of time. It, yeah. It's good to it's good to have you in studio. Has it been I guess Yeah, you were here for one in studio since since Bella, no, this is the first. This is the first, yeah. Oh, no wonder it feels so good in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is the first. So that would be the end of August that she was born. And oh, uh, yeah, you, you know what? And uh, then I I'm, think I wasn't I'm, there the week before either because I was in uh Chicago for the DNC. Yep, and uh, I'm realizing now all the times I remember you being here, we were recording World's Greatest Con, which is coming along swimmingly. We are being very productive. We're being very good. In fact, so good, I think I'm allowed to talk out of school. We thought Mm -hmm. this was going to be one episode, and now it's two episodes, and uh, uh, love it when shows grow. Love it when we find out that there's much more story there. Yeah, yeah. So we hope, uh, uh, you know, we're working on stuff now, but obviously it's a little... It's a little hard. Bella plus election equals world's greatest con is operating at like about 40% of the efficiency that it was before, which good news for listeners is still about 200% the efficiency of what we were doing at the beginning of the year where we were not going fast at all. Now we're going very fast and we're just going a slower version of the fast we were doing. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, man, it is a busy, busy time. Uh, I guess. I'm, what are you up to? You're doing a lot of content now. Boy, am I, man. Uh, uh, I guess I could, I didn't want to really talk much about it because I didn't want to be all talk. I wanted actions to stand up for themselves. But like today, today I posted, uh, uh, I don't know, for the third or fourth time, I was able to get a fully produced short out both on Scam Nation and Modern Rogue. Uh, every single day I'm getting up, you know, at 5.30, running miles, and then I come up with ideas, and the pipeline is so tight. Like, I'm going over fidel or not fidelity. I'm going over volume over fidelity, just, like, uh, editing down a minute every single day and posting. It's been 21 days now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bonnie is over my shoulder. Oh. Yeah. She's... Uh, 
just going to walk through <laughs> yeah. the, well, the yeah. non-recording part of the facility. <laughs> <laughs> That's just Brian saying things that he sees. <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> Has no bearing on the show. <laughs> just Bonnie walking around. It's called, it's called Theater of the Mind. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Listener, but, imagine if you will. At any Bonnie rate. over Brian's shoulder. <laughs> will it affect the show? No. But just imagine it. <laughs> the, uh, oh, there's a pterodactyl over my shoulder. <laughs> that dog looks like sneakers. Oh, it's flown away. It has <laughs> nothing to do with what we're talking about. Theater of the mind. <laughs> so the uh, <laughs> this is my new my new bit. <laughs> useless musical theater. <laughs> no, useless radio theater. <laughs> Colgate brings you useless radio theater. <laughs> Oh, it's a big steam engine that drove away. <laughs> uh, whoa, that's that's a cliff. Let's back up. You can barely you can imagine all the radio drama people, all like the sound effects, but they're barely doing it. Oh, there's a steam engine. <laughs> Went away. <laughs> uh, you hear that cicada? Nope, barely hear it. Went away. <laughs> and they're just getting visibly angrier and angrier. <laughs> and one of the whispers, <laughs> I went to Juilliard. <laughs> Schrader's Tonic brings you useless radio theater. <laughs> Schrader's Tonic, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> So uh, the, the the part that everyone sees is the shorts, but uh, behind the scenes, you know, Justin, how hard I've been working on a uh, certain product that hopefully will be announced later this week. Well, has been announced to certain special people. Oh, that was a secret. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> like you, Justin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I told you about it. <laughs> Oh, there's emails. Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh man, Superman was just here. Wow. <laughs> Clark, you should have seen him. Well, maybe this is theater of the mind. I just <laughs> yeah. You don't know. You don't know if these theater emails. of the lot. There mind. were emails. Oh, sorry, they're gone. Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the, hopefully, yeah, that'll be announced uh, later this week. Oh, so it's, it's soon. Yeah. That's fine if people know that there's emails to other people. Yeah. Right? They should be on the email list. Oh, did did you ever see the email that I sent? I, I saw one today. Oh, uh, okay. Well, the one oh, I no, 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 no. Yes, the one where you just uh, got uh, uh, caught template. up in, in the template. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Did you? Uh, uh, I got a lot of responses. Uh, uh, all of the positive. Some people were mad, all caps mad. You know what they were mad about? What? That they got harambeed because I put so yeah. many links that just went to the picture of the Cincinnati Zoo doesn't want you to see. Yeah. No, that's a good one. Uh, dude, you ever just, if you were to talk to a president, will you try to harambe him? Uh, oh my God. I, like a dozen people are going to find that very funny when you do that. I think it'd be great. <laughs> you know who the best president to harambe would be? Uh, uh, I wish I knew a single African president. What? My joke was going to be George Washington, but you took it to a oh. whole nother level. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I was just thinking of where Harambe came from. Cincinnati? No, he wasn't born in Cincinnati, was he? No. I bet like you're like you're an expert on Harambe. I no, I that's why I, I'm owning my ignorance. <laughs> Imagine the laughs I would have got on George Washington though. <laughs> that would have been that would have been great. <laughs> Harambe, you know, Harambe you wouldn't know the fuck. You wouldn't know what was going on. <laughs> you would have no idea. That fucker had wooden teeth. What? Oh, uh, what? Yes, Harambe was born in Texas. What? Mm -hmm. What part? Brownsville. Uh, hey Brian, where, hi, Brian, where where are you born? 
I was oh don't I was born in California. Wow, so Harambe's more of a Texan than you are. Yes. Holy uh, shit. Okay. And he died. Uh, yeah. He died, Brian, and you live. Do okay. you feel guilt for that? <laughs> well, uh, well <clears throat> not only are you a fake Texan, you're alive while Harambe lies dead on the ground <laughs> for only the 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 crime of trying to show a local child how to be a rootin' tootin' cowboy <laughs> like the pure Texan that Harambe was. Well, you're a Texan. Do you? Why didn't you save him? It's true. I know. I should have. <laughs> Wait. Uh, he, That's he what, I go. remember when Narambe got shot. My Texan force went off. <laughs> I feel a great disturbance in the Second Amendment. An unarmed <laughs> gorilla in captivity has been shot. <laughs> oh. Uh. Hey, man, what's up with these betting markets going all Trump crazy? Oh, uh, by the way, uh, Trump spam <laughs> text alert. He's uh, playing 4D chess with me, Justin. You want to know what he's saying now? What? Alan, don't give me money. Oh, really? Seriously, don't. And he sent it a lot. Uh, did you get the one... On Sunday, where he just said, I just left the McDonald's. Oh, no. He, he said uh, uh, the version I got cut off. It was just all caps. And it says, I went to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, like, he's a happy toddler. <laughs> and I'm like, that's good. It's very good. I just, yeah, I just got, I just left McDonald's. And I'm like, did you get me anything? <laughs> is this like why? Why is this like a text from my college roommate is now the way that you are soliciting money in the year of our Lord twenty twenty four? Why are the betting markets going crazy for Trump? Do you want a serious answer, or are we going to fart? fart uh, uh, oh, I don't know. A short, serious answer. Like, do, do they know something that the that oh, the pollsters that people take at the polls? No, don't? no. The polls have been uh, good for Trump. And then in the state of Nevada, there is a one reporter who essentially kind of like knows that state better than anybody. And nobody really formulates a Nevada take unless it is uh, John Ralston's take that you have kind of uh, uh, made your own. He runs an early voting blog. And in his early voting, he said like, there has never been Republican turnout like this in since 2008. This wow. is this is like unprecedented Republican turnout uh, for early voting, which would bode well, considering that uh, uh, that had been the strength of Democrats. So nothing is decided, but that is a, a very bad sign at the very least compared to previous elections. And so like the betting markets for each because you can bet on each individual state. And those betting markets like totally shot into Trump territory over the last 48 hours, essentially based on that one dude's blog. Uh, uh, other than that, I think it's just, um, you know, it's vibes plus momentum plus people looking at the Kamala Harris campaign and saying, Liz Cheney? Really? <laughs> but it's like, it's the, like the, the secret to the whole thing. <laughs> We're going to banish Trump to the shadow realm. Liz Cheney. <laughs> of hey, Dick Dick's daughter. Fe fe fellow, uh, fellow Democrats. Uh, how are we on, on, on Cheney's just in general? <laughs> you know, that John Stewart, Tim Walls was on the daily show last night. That was, uh, John Stewart's question to Tim Walls is, do we have to with the Cheney's? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, uh, but yeah, so that's that's where it is. Uh, obviously, politics, politics, politics is where you uh, want to be for uh, for all that uh, uh, up to date information. But that's why the the prediction markets. Here's something that I do find odd about it is that like what you hear whenever you say like, oh, the prediction markets uh, have made their opinion known on who they believe is going to win, and that's something that's changed throughout this entire process. Uh, what you often hear is like, oh, it's a couple whales. Couple Trump whales came in and just totally, totally fucked up the whole thing. And it's like, yeah, that's the idea, right? Is is uh, <laughs> like what they do is they spend money and then they throw more money so that they can make even more money by actually affecting the election. Well, and also <laughs> the way that those betting markets work, they're not like a bet that you would make at a at, at a bookmaker. 
like you're not betting with odds or anything like that. Right. You you're are, buying, you're buying essentially stocks. Uh, you're buying and selling. No, it, it's, it's a contract. Ah, so like you are buying, it is more valuable. If you very much believe that Kamala Harris is going to win the election, then a bunch of yahoos driving up the percentage for Trump is good. Cause that means that the Kamala number is lower and you make money based on how much of a dollar the other side of that is. So it's like, if you buy Kamala at 35, that means you get the other side of 35 as your payback. So what you really want, they are incentivizing you to buy long shot contracts. So like you should, if somebody's driving shit up, that's a money-making opportunity. If you believe that the opposite is going to happen. Uh, Okay. Oh, if you want to get uh, PX3 politics, politics, politics.com, that's our brand new home. Uh, uh, when, when, one last thing on the, on the PX3 stuff, uh, how, are you, are you, are you, uh, unclenching the fists as far as the fear of moving to a new platform or is it still kind of scary? Like I would imagine you never totally relax on, uh, even as you surpass <laughs> your previous, then it's like, Oh, I, I need to keep working hard or well not... i'll let you know when uh when i pass the previous so right now we're doing good uh <laughs> we're about two and a half weeks in i think the first week gave me a little bit of a false hope because oh that's there's nothing like that ecstasy of like a novel thing is happening and the initial rush is just bonkers but i guess i thought that it's like okay well you know, the first week we did about 50% of what we had done before. And I'm like, great. That means the next week, if we do like half of that, a third of that, and the week after that, it'll be a half and a third of that and a half and a third of that and a half and a third of that. We'll, we'll get to where we need to go. Well, week two was 10% of, 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 of the first one. And so it's like, okay, all right, all right, it's fine. Uh, we're not totally fucked. At least it didn't totally die. But uh, uh, we certainly weren't uh, rollicking. So we've started to push out for more people that might not have, uh, uh, you know, gotten gotten the word out. And obviously, as we are now into like nut cutting time, uh, I think people who people who want it are gonna uh, are gonna take advantage of so, it. So, so I I had a thought. You were describing <clears throat> the uh, uh, welcome to the show uh, sub, uh, where you subscribe on Patreon, but we talk about the benefits of sub Substack. In mm. theory, couldn't somebody not even have their own show, but just be a guest on every other Substacker's show in rotation and have their own Substack that people would follow? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, they could. Hmm. Now, the value proposition for your Substack would be something interesting. You'd have to have some reason why people would want to pay you money, but you would certainly be gaining a fair amount of uh, new emails. Like well, that. That is that is the one thing that Substack is great at. And I've really I, I did not fully grok when I was thinking about coming on. Is that when you are pushing everybody to like subscribe to your podcast through Substack, which is great because they do have a very easy way, no matter where you sign up, that they will send you an email. So on your phone, you can go to whatever podcatcher of your choice and sign up for, you know, to get those uh, podcasts on, on your podcatcher. But every time that you do that, you are incentivizing people to also give their email. So like, like every time that you would otherwise just be saying, go find that on the podcatcher of your choice. And you can always do that. But if I say the best way to get it is to come to politics, politics, politics.com, then what I'm essentially saying is that if you like me also give me your email, cause I'm going to send you cool emails. And also the posts for the episodes are also a little richer. Like I'm, I'm doing, it's incentivized me to make those posts also a little informational a little bloggy along with the the uh, episode that's going out to everybody well i i wonder i guess i guess this is the thought that that uh, just got planted in my my head is um 
Uh, yeah, back back when none of us knew whether or not this whole internet thing was going to pan out, you know, nigh on 20 years ago, uh, I, I always uh, felt smart for creating separate verticals for everything and not, you know, having in, all my eggs in any one basket. Now my eggs are really spread around. And, and worse yet, modern rogue people... Clearly, from the comments of the shorts, like or scam school, they're all like the scam school channel. People are like, "Oh man, I always wondered whatever happened to that guy." And somebody's like, "You haven't seen the last eight, you know, seven years of Modern Rogue." They're like, and the guy's like, "What?" <laughs> you yeah. know, like clearly is, and that's in the neighborhood of yeah. YouTube. And it's like, I, I'm, I'm, I can imagine like an RSS mega feed where it's like, uh, like I, I don't have the bandwidth to start yet another podcast from scratch but a, a single rss feed that has everything including guest appearances on other people's programs or whatever would be pretty dope i've mm. heard worse ideas yeah i've heard worse ideas I'll just, than I'll the just brian click. brushwood the mega mega brian Mecca Brian. <laughs> Mecca Brian. I can catch <laughs> And also I can pluck rockets out of the sky with my giant <laughs> robot arms. Yeah. That'd be fucking great. Yeah. Now imagine showing that to George Washington. <laughs> he, he would, would be know. amazed. That fucker would just be floored. You just be he like, said, oh, I can't God, I fucking eat it, George. <laughs> you don't know shit. You're so fucking dumb. He'd say, uh, hey, cross the Delaware again, dipshit. <laughs> I cannot tell a lot lie. I'm yeah. fully chubbed up right now. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was fucking <laughs> awesome. You're saying my little bullshit revolution country? I So we, I mean, I do die, obviously, but this fucking shit happens? Fuck me, bro. That's tight. That's tight. <laughs> that's tight, that's, George that's Washington. That's the last thing George Washington says before dying again. <laughs> that's tight. Whoops. I slipped. Oh, no. <laughs> George so, Washington died again. <laughs> he died on the way to this whole planet. Goodbye, George Washington. <laughs> you died again after being revived to see Mecha Godzilla because Brian wanted to start a substack. <laughs> And it seems to me that you slipped and died when you just came back to life. A weird quirk of the temporal fields. I would have liked if you lived longer than just five minutes. But no one said that there was water on the floor. And you were wearing old shoes. <laughs> there. Uh, uh, our friend who's on the way. Uh, I I just texted him a photo of, of us being doing the show, hoping he understands <laughs> we're being doing the show. Good. Uh, hey, so uh, I read uh, Heaton's book, and um, oh, it was good. It eh. was. Uh, uh, did, eh. did, <laughs> eh. It was. It was good enough. It was good enough that no, I. Sorry, want in my culture, that means great. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was good enough that I want. To give him more coaching on doing interviews about it, because I'm just like, uh, like I as I was going through, I was just like, damn it, here's your bulleted list of cool shit that's in this book. Maybe don't um, like move right in the middle of your book promo. Oh, I thought you were saying like like there was a bug or a dinosaur over my shoulder, and you're like, don't move. <laughs> it can detect motion. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I yeah, he's, I, I've not read the book yet because I haven't read shit. That's one thing about when you're, when you're a father, people are like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to send you all these books that really helped me when I was a parent and yada, yada. And then I'm like, awesome. When am I supposed to fucking read these books? Like here's like, I, I'm constantly working. And when I'm not working and I'm uh, holding the baby, I'm like, I got two hands. What am I bewitched? My Samantha, I'm gonna uh, levitate this book and have it uh, flip uh, pages. I can't do that. <laughs> Wait, I, I mean, you could do the audiobook. He released the audiobook. Uh, I uh, could, I could do that. But uh, also, 
Like, I don't know. I have to listen to this stupid fucking baby. Well, I, I, I mean, oh, okay. I'm so, I was convinced you're going to say, uh, I do, I do, we're not wrong. I have to listen to this stupid co host all the time. <laughs> not uh, going to clarify it. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 uh, not I do, untrue. Uh, I do want to uh, say two things about the book. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. One, like, uh, uh, obviously, almost all of it I had heard before over lunches or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you know, because we all we all rehearse material as we work it out. Um, but but he managed to surprise me with some really interesting facts. Like, uh, 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 lonely people are seven times more likely to be politically involved. Yeah, they get involved with politics, uh, and uh, sports people are six times less likely to be lonely. That's how big the divide yeah. between being surrounded and on a team where you're all moving in unison and training together. And that's your shared rah, rah, Wait, people who are following sports or involved in sports it, in a sport. So, so there's normies who, uh, uh, don't pay attention to politics at all. Right. Yeah. And then there are sports normies who are actually on sports team. Gotcha. Sports normies, six times less likely to be normal person lonely. Okay. Uh, po politics followers, seven times more likely, or, or actually being lonely, you're seven times more likely to be involved with politics. Oh. Like that, like it's, uh, uh, and then, and then he has a section where he, I, I believe he was quoting from somebody else's blog post about how politics is sports for nerds. And he says, you gotta understand like when people get mad because people don't know what's going on in this thing or that thing, it's because they don't follow your sport. Yeah. And, and he says, here's an example. And I think he was citing from somebody else's blog post, but it's like, you don't follow F1. So, so think who's the best at F1. Uh, did you think Mario Andretti? Uh, no, he died 10 years ago. And he goes, ha, just kidding. He didn't die. But the fact that you didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> says everything. The real, uh, the real champion is uh, Gleep Glop Magoo. And he goes, ha, I just made that name up. Yeah. <laughs> you still don't know. And he just keeps on going <laughs> with that. Yeah. But he, he credits the, the – but the, the craziest part was as I got near the end of the book – the biggest thing I was worried about, because I know Heaton has so many great ideas, but I was worried that the book, because he's been working on it for half a decade, that it might at some point veer into the weeds. Uh, but I'm like, man, it feels like he's wrapping everything up. And so yesterday morning, it's uh, uh, 7.05 a.m. I'm, I'm at Chick-fil-A having my grilled nuggets, which you're not allowed to get till 10.30, but I'm a regular, so they do nice. it anyway. Uh, and... Uh, I'm sitting there playing my Marvel snap and he's talking about uh, uh, effective communication and golden bridges and any sites that the that that's from Peter Bogosian's book that he co-authored -auth um, uh, how to have impossible conversations. And I'm like, man, I love that book. I got so much great advice. And he goes, and one person who does all this really well is my friend, Brian Brushwood. Wow. And then, and I'm just you like, you got a shout out in the book. Well, and then, and then he goes on to describe nice things that I became very uncomfortable, which is why I'm it out here good uh, it was very surreal it was very nice that's that is a crazy moment for you because that is a book heaton wrote a book that you would read no matter what like like you read books like this all the time and so for you to be listed as a person in a book like that has definitely got to be an odd that's that's like you being name checked in a tenacious d song Yes, yes, that, that's exactly what it was like. And uh, Neil Fleisch is is, say, is asking, he didn't tell me before publishing it. No, which amazed me because I would imagine that he like, I, and, you know, maybe that's a good litmus test. To, so like months from now, he'd be like, "How was my book?" And he'd be like, "Oh, great, this is a great book, really." What was your favorite, favorite part? part? Any okay. surprises oh, you hold encountered? On. Hold on. Big, big question here, Brian. Does he mention me in the book? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I don't think. You That's know, fine. Not... No, no, no. It's fine if he doesn't. I just need to oh, know. Oh, you need to know. Not... You need the heads yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if he does, I don't believe it's my name. Good. Okay. Yeah. Like, uh, but anyway, this dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it, it, it also happened right in the section. And I guess it makes sense that there would be correlation. Like, it was in the section that I was like, you know what? I'm definitely going to full-throated uh, uh, shout the praises of this book. It's a really, really good book. And then that was the moment. And I'm like, well, shit, now it's complicated for me to say what a good oh, book this is. Oh, no, you should. Get the word out. I do think that that he, uh, you know, it's hard. I know because he put it out himself. And so 
he has nobody over his shoulder screaming at him to do press More media. and to call in every favor and everything. But I really do think that he probably should. Well, uh, uh, yes. And he's also, he's in the middle of moving, so he's going to be distracted. Um, and I, I reminded he's on him. He's PX3 on Friday, too. I just interviewed him today. Uh, oh, oh, you know what? I'll, I'll put the word out. If anybody liked uh, his book or, you know, if you just want to read the foreword or something, whatever you could get for free. And then like nothing matters more than number of reviews. And as I was telling Heaton, I was like, look, the time that you're going to do the most media for this is going to be after the election. It's going to be in that wave of embarrassment where everybody's the, 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 the refractory period. It, that's And yeah. I even called it a refractory period. I said, I said, America just spent two years hate fucking and then they're going to have this two. wave of embarrassment and then they're going to want somebody to blame. And yes, the irony is not lost on me. You with your book of tribalism will be able to make tribalism the shared enemy of everybody who's embarrassed of their behavior. But what that means, and I, and I said, your job is not to sell a ton of books uh, over the next two weeks uh, in the run up to the election. Your job is to make sure that you get over 100 reviews, hopefully at four and a half stars. Four and a half stars is code for uh, everybody's taking this seriously. Uh, uh, if it's four and a half stars and over 100 reviews, then at that peak shame moment after the election when things calm down and everybody's wanting to walk back their fever pitch that they did, that you get to show up with a salve that says, you know, I... I read this book about tribalism and I didn't realize how powerful and built in and not my fault all that tribal behavior yeah. was. Uh, so anyway, that's that's what I'm help, uh, pushing pushing him. And and I think you'll you'll succeed. I think he'll succeed. Uh, it sounds like an amazing book, and I do look forward to to consuming it. But uh, I know he put so much time and effort into it. I, I'm I'm I don't know. I, I want I want I want the best for our boy. Our boy heats, which by the way, let's actually uh, uh, point this out for everybody. Speaking of politics, uh, we will not be broadcasting our, at our normal time in, uh, uh, on election day because we will be doing a live election day special right here <laughs> yeah. in this studio. Uh, Eat Andrew shit, Heaton, Brian Williams. Andrew Heaton, uh, Jen Briney will be here. It'll be like we did for the midterms. I have my four scenarios. Let me pitch this to you, Brian. Yeah. Last time it was big boards that I karate punched and kicked. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, as the scenarios kind of fell out of likelihood. What do you think? And actually, I just realized we could do it right there. Are you talking about a pinata? Four pinatas. Actual fucking pinatas. Uh, uh, effigies. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. And then, we just as, and then as they like fall out because some of them are like, you know, two of them are like absolute red wave sweep, each, each absolute one. blue wave sweep. And so it's like when, when that becomes less likely, we can just lower one, of the, one of the pinatas, we All can right. play some Mexican music and then we can, we can hit it maybe with Question. Disney bat baseball heating and make them, uh, 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 make them try to swing it with the, uh, I am, I am not joking about this, Justin. Yeah. Um, if you need children, I can get you children. And then they could just swarm in <laughs> when it's declared and beat into pieces one of the effigies and find different surprising candies that they will give loud reviews of live on the air. <laughs> if one of them happens early, I'll tell you, based on some of these returns, I think one of them might also be out. One of them might be out now. <laughs> so uh, 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 we, we, we might be able to knock one out. That, that could be in the first five minutes of the program. We bring in, bring in these kids and let them, uh, uh, let them, let them uh, uh, hit the pinata with a baseball bat. Oh my God. That would be, that would be. Stellar. We might need to bring in the possum posse to sing the pinata song. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, 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 by God, we could be the bright, happy spot. We could be the happiest broadcast in all of America that night. I I feel like we did the best coverage of the midterms, and I believe we're going to do the best coverage of the election. I, I, I say that with all due humility, which is zero. We're going <laughs> to fucking smoke everybody. Uh, uh, it's going to be awesome. And and I, 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 I mean that from the perspective of 
you're not going to find a smarter show and mm-hmm. you're not going to find a more fun show because like we're not just going to be bullshit we're going to give you actual granular county by county looks at uh, how this is evolving i think both times that we've done election stuff in 2020 and 2022 i think i called florida within like five minutes of the first returns hitting because i know that state so well yeah uh and, and people who, who watched it uh, uh in 2020 and 2022 will know i i can call if, if there are certain numbers in certain counties in south florida i can call that shit fucking immediately i called it i think like an hour before any network and i was goddamn right uh yeah of course um god i i'm so excited to have something so soon because uh, we just now, we just now got proper hosting weather, and last time, God, what a fucking riot it was, and yeah. the the party afterwards. I can't wait to do it again. I think it's going to be an absolute blast, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. And it happens in two weeks. God, two, two weeks. G two weeks. D weeks, which means weeks. I got to find some fucking pinata. Uh, or have them made by an enterprising person. All right. We're, I don't think we, I'm not going to put that on. Well, I'm we, just we, saying. We, we can go to Party City and get some piñata. All right. All right. Well, custom piñata. Hola, señor. Yo puedo hacer tu piñata. Buy a genuine Mexican, <laughs> a Jewish Mexican. Yeah. Come on. That's you work can, ethic. You can say. <laughs> and you're like, hey, some people might think this is inappropriate that we're beating up a pinata on the internet these pinatas were made by a jewish mexican i was gonna say if it's a so jewish that means they were cheap or expensive i don't know which way the stereotypes cut <laughs> there goes there goes my joke oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh, uh hey do we got a game yes we do all right, welcome to Me, Him, or Them, the game where we look back at some of the most out-of-context things that have been said on the Diamond Club uh, media. You'll be presented with a quote and three choices on who said it. A point will be awarded for each correct yes, as well as a bonus point for telling me where the source is from. That's it. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, the second uh, second one is where the source is from. What was the first one again? Who said it. Oh, between and it's only me or Justin, right? You, Justin, and then one other candidate. And That's you will tell us what that candidate is correct. per Each question. One. Okay. Okie dokie. All right. All right. All right. First. This is, yeah, this is like, like, like an evolved version of I said what? Yep. All right. I'm certain it's no less mean. <laughs> well, I mean, it's our, our least favorite game, Brian, because it reveals the frailty of the human memory, which is never a pleasant thing to realize exactly. Whenever you play a game about the frailty of the human memory, you want to be like 10% bad. And then when you're 50 to 75% bad, you're like, oh, I am, I am but a simple vessel. I, I have will... no control over my life, and my brain is turning into mush. You know what's funny is I was going to say, I will never forget the time that they played the exact same questions two times in a row, and we didn't notice. But then I realized I most likely will forget yes. the time yeah. <laughs> that they played the same game twice. Yeah. All right, go ahead. I tried to balance this the best I can. All right, first quote. I'm always going to break stuff, and then he'll have a Nagila, that explanation. Your options are Brian, Justin, and Andrew Heaton. Oh, I know. Is one of the, the one of the questions is on what show, right? Uh, yes, that okay. is worth a bonus point. Okay, uh, uh, I know the show because I remember the incident. Mm-hmm. And from context, I believe I believe Justin said it. I think of the three of those, the one most bizarrely comfortable with making <laughs> Jewish jokes is me. So, uh, yeah. Also, it was in reference to at the surprise party uh, at Heaton's. Uh, there was a, uh, an awkward moment where a glass shattered and it went dead silence. And in the silence, Justin <laughs> filled it. Hava <laughs> Nagila Hava Nagila Hava Nagila. I don't know the words. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I believe that was on this program uh, the, a day or two after that surprise party. Uh, Brian, you get a bonus point there and you're answering with Justin. Justin, what is your answer? <laughs> the same thing because I'm almost positive that's correct. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, you got bonus points. However, you were incorrect on who said it. It was, in fact, Andrew Heaton. Oh! oh. <laughs> what was the quote again? I'm always going to break stuff, and then he'll have an Aguila that explanation. Okay, so so yeah, that uh, I think I think he was inspired by that moment and decided that's gotcha. now officially in his playbook. So I did do that. Uh, yes. You were definitely the leader. You you showed awesome. him the way. Awesome, that's hilarious for me. All right, next quote. <laughs> yeah, th that is a weird moment where you look back and somebody describes to you like a thing that they can't believe you did, and it's like you have no memory of it because you're just made of awesome everywhere you go, and then you're <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, pass me, classic, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next quote. Wait, not Mount Brushmore? How did you guys miss that? Oh. Who uh, who's the 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 loose cannon? The loose cannon is your brother Eric Young. Mm. Well, I can't remember. So, uh, what are the shows that are in 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 play here? Anything made by uh, or anything that is Diamond Club in related. the Diamond Club in the Diamond Club. Okay. Well, I don't know if there's anything that. You, me, and Eric have been on but this show. Uh, yeah, it was the NSFW where where we had our brothers on, and Jay came fucking knives out. They were yeah. like, let's tell naughty stories about our brothers. And, and, and Eric was like, oh, go ahead, Jay. And Jay's like, Brian had a fucking boner asleep in a car. <laughs> we were all talking about his boner. And Eric's like, oh, I, I think Justin ate the last piece of cake once. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I want to say NSFW. Maybe that's the challenge is what, which era it was. Yeah. What was the line again? Wait, not Mount Brushmore? How did you guys miss that? Yeah, I'll say Eric. Eric said that on NSFW show in the library with a revolver. <laughs> with R.L. Stein. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say Brian said it, but also in the library with R.L. Stein. You both got the shows, but you didn't get who said it. It was, in fact, Justin. Whoa. Damn. Classic, classic Nailed Justin. Nailed it, me. <laughs> <laughs> Another G awesome moment again. for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. We got we got ham emojis in yeah, there. Yeah, hams, uh, 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 hams, hams for Jay. Maybe yeah. steamed hams. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the esteemed hams, yes. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> esteemed hams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this the, time of year. The, the, <laughs> located entirely on the NSFW show. Yeah. Mm. All right, next quote. You don't even look like scrambled porn. You look like an impressionist painting. <laughs> oh, oh, that's... Uh, uh, I like talking about scrambled porn. I, yes, that that does sound like a <laughs> like, just a thing. If there's ever a moment where I can turn the conversation <laughs> to scrambled porn, I will be taking oh, uh, by, that by, moment. By the way, uh, uh, maybe we've talked about this. I don't remember if it was on the air or not, but but we were talking about how much we enjoy a mixed company. Um, the those those signifiers, like you know, like you were talking about dropping a reference to the bang bus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know if we talked about this, but I was trying to think of when would be the best time to do this. And I decided at a big conference would be the time to do it, okay. which is to be giving a talk. And, mm -hmm. and I'm saying this partly so that people hold me to do it. Uh, uh, like imagine when I did that talk to a big government agency, right? Sure. Uh, imagine, um, imagine if I wanted to play a clip and I walk over, I'm like, in fact, I have a video that, that I think will be instructive. And then you see me futz with the computer and then over the speaker, you just hear the porn hub, the boo, boo, doo, boo, boo. <laughs> and then, and then, and then just whatever. Just look happens, into the crowd and, and just and see like, whose eyes are like, <laughs> and there's just, it's just me like bunch of y'all motherfuckers just told on yourselves. Daddy, 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 all of you. Uh, so, uh, wh who is the third player in this episode? In this episode, Jeff Kanata was the third player. Oh, this would have been possibly all the way back to BB Live Show, and it would have been an Uvu low bandwidth melty face Ooh, thing. All right, so that's BB. Is it BB Live Show or is it an SFW show? Uh, well, I guess it'd be BB Live Show, right? Well, uh, did we did we ever do Uvu on NSFW show? We may have done like very early. Yeah, 
I think we were Skyping in, and you could only do one instance of Skype. And so Skype was our umbilical to Twit. And then it was uh, 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 Uvu was how it was was how people could guest in. Uh-oh. Speaking of guests, oh. we we may have one. We'll ask. We'll ask if. Uh, uh, we'll see if he's shy. Yeah. But that's that's my guess. Hopefully, yeah. Bon- here. Uh, 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 I will say that it was me again, and uh, uh, no, you want to know what? It's Kanata. And it's BB Live Show. Kanata and BB Live Show? Yeah. All yeah. right. That's, uh, wait, you say Kanata said it? Yeah. I think it was about Kanata. That sounds like a Justin reference. I would say nope. Justin said it on BB like Live Kanata Show with it. the R.L. Stein in the library. Ah, in the library. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, y'all got the show, but y'all didn't get who said it. Brian, you said this. Oh! oh! Good one, Fast Brian. Naughty, You're funny. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> Uh, does he want to make a uh, say hi or? All right, if if he's off duty, that's fine. But but if if he doesn't mind saying hi, that'd be fun. Okay. All right, we've made it to the halfway round. Points are three and three. We get to introduce a nice surprise. Uh oh, ba bum ba bow. From my ever endeavors at Half Price Books, we've got the album "The Musical Treasures of Switzerland," produced by Phillips. It is a collection of musical melodies from all over the world. In this case, a lot of fucking yodeling. Oh, (laughs) oh, that's delicious. And and it's on LP. Okay, uh, here, I'm not even going to put this in a uh, YouTube short. Here's a here's a trivia question for you. Hey, Justin, how many grooves are in that size of LP? That's a 45 RPM LP. 45. How many grooves? 45 grooves. Uh, Nope. It's Damn. one. Fuck. Because it wouldn't be a groove if it, like, it just goes in a spiral circle. It just, there's not multiple grooves. It's just, just like some one. math dad joke. Just one. No, it's not a joke. What it's are you, just like. Fucking Rumble Stiltskin? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I can't operate him. It's my son. The surgeon <laughs> was a woman. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh, shit. Have you, has anyone tried to hit. Fucking chat GPT like oh one with the with, with the, 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 the misogyny riddle. I think I think we were joking about that uh of uh, uh off mic, but yeah, uh they should. We need to hit the Do you know this, Nathan? I don't. So there was a a, a, a riddle for okay. which uh uh was like I first heard in my misbegotten youth with my alcoholic father hanging out at bars, and so a bunch of bar flies talking to each other. Uh, which is there is a accident and a, uh, a father and a son are in the accident. Father dies immediately. Son gets rushed to the hospital and uh, uh, the surgeon comes up to the body and says, I cannot operate on this uh, uh, child. They are my son. Yeah. He's Who my son. Is... How is that possible? Yeah. How is that possible? Surgeon walks in and says, I cannot operate on this child's. He yeah. is my son. The surgeon is the mother? Yes. Well, yeah. yeah. So imagine that that was an unanswerable riddle for like about- That was your go-to <laughs> to stump anyone. <laughs> Nobody could see that hours, coming. Hours of it like, was like unreal. Wait, wait, you think uh, step, stepfather, step? Uncle, <laughs> but it would have they got divorced. Uh, divorced uh, twice. Like <laughs> uh, they're crazy. Maybe they yeah, uh, identical twins, separated birth. Uh, the son is really adopted. Uh, adopted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a fucking for real fooler <laughs> for decades, where nobody was like, yes, a woman could be a doctor. <laughs> Yeah, it was specifically a surgeon. Like that was part of it. Like, uh, yeah, it, uh, uh, boy, misogyny, misogyny. What a cloak! <laughs> All right, I next. Get, I get that obvious. All I right. want that yodel. I want them yodel bottles. <laughs> All right. I don't feel like anybody's being exploited there. You know, they're just using what they got. Your options are Brian, Justin, Bonnie. It's Bonnie. <laughs> Jesus uh, I don't even, you didn't right. even name the third player. I'm like, it's Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie. Bonnie. Okay, we've got right. Bonnie for both. Can y'all give me the show? Uh, I think that's great night. 
I think I feel like it's, it's in night your, attack. I feel like it's in your your house before we moved out here. Yeah, so it'd right be now. night attack. Yeah. I think it's night attack. No, Brian gets I, the point with damn. night attack. Uh, it was in fact Bonnie. Yeah, <laughs> right. talking about strip clubs, I assume, right? Hmm? Talking about strip clubs, I assume. Uh, yes, this was uh, Bonnie's Paradise from Night Attack Three. Oh shit! Oh, it was an album it was from the album. Yep. Yeah. Uh, hey, Justin, is there another mic near you? Uh, there's others over here. Okay. Man. Yeah, we'll figure. It out. No, you resist the impulse, Nathan. <laughs> Stick to this. All right, we're back to Papa Smurf and his complicated relationship with his tribe. <laughs> You've got Brian, Justin, and Bryce. Okay. Wait. We've been dipping in that Papa Smurf well. Recently. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that we were in reruns. <laughs> I, I was thinking just like in the chat, I was like, was that last week? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was. Like, I feel like I've been making jokes about how either, either oh Papa, God, Smurf, Papa Smurf fucked Smurfette and populated the village or... <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, that does. Um, I'm gonna say Brian said it, and it was uh, on Great Night. All right, Justin. I feel like I said it because I said it recently, and I think if the point of this is that we are all just slowly fading, then uh, I just did not remember saying it, and I'm now saying it again. And I think that I said it all the way back in NSFW show. All right. Uh, Justin with uh, saying that he said it as well as NSFW show. Justin, you don't get any points here. Uh, Brian, you get a point. Actually, you get two points because this was last week's episode and you said it. Oh, God damn it. So it was. It was last week. It oh, was last oh, week. Oh, damn it. All right. Good. I was like, because also that's, that's more of the nuanced way that I talk now that I'm, you know, I have three increasingly adult daughters who can write memoirs. I'm, I'm more cautious. That, like, <laughs> my father was loose with his tongue, often referring to Smurfette's providence. <laughs> uh, uh, not, not for nothing. I'm going through a lot of old media from 20 years ago, and uh, that that magician Brian had an axe to grind, and maybe uh, was was harsh, harsh with all that fiery energy that only a 20 what, about magic old. shit. Oh, just just like like I'm watching. I was watching a setup. I was watching a setup for a beat Brian Brushwood on the road episode and uh, apropos of nothing, I guess it was a running joke question yeah. mark, but, but just, I'm quoting from the exorcist going, your mother sucks cocks in hell. Wow. That was a hell of a thing to say just hey! now. <laughs> Holy shit. Is it legendary comedy writer and food influencer, Bill Oakley? What? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. here we'll we'll switch to yeah. A... Bill, just go ahead and sit on the couch there, and we will get uh, we will get a, a, a camera on you. Yeah, sorry, I, uh, I didn't mean to psych you into this. This was not the intention. Uh, the intention was just to chill out and have a good time. Uh, wait, 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 wait. So, so we're we're gonna wrap up soon. Uh, uh, uh well, yeah, but we can we can say hi, Bill. Yeah. Uh, how you doing, buddy? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. So uh 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 so you are uh, uh sorry, can you tap on that mic just to make sure that we are getting uh, tap tap it hard, just you can beat it up. There you go. Okay, so now I keep keep tapping. Yep, yep, tap. yep, yep, yep. Up. There we go. Can you scream it to it? Hello. Oh, almost. I can almost hear something. Okay. Oh. Uh maybe here. Can you try that mic over there? Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. yep. That one there we go. No, Hi, everybody. Hey, yeah. there we go. We got it. I'll set up a shot. There we go. There we go. Uh, uh, so, oh, we so go. Bill, uh, I guess. The camera. Hi. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, uh, once a year, there is a bar here in Austin that turns into a Moe's Tavern. Correct. Nickel City Bar has been doing for several years this thing where they completely redecorate the bar to look like Moe's Tavern. The employees are dressed up in Simpsons-y costumes. They have Simpsons-y food items. And it's the biggest uh, copyright violation <laughs> <laughs> in, in history. And they, they, they still are getting away with it. God bless them. And for the past couple of years, they've been flying me out to appear there and, you know, just uh, 
I guess just chill meat just, pans just and bring, stuff. Just bring a Simpsons energy bring, exactly. to it. Yeah. And so I just left there uh, a few minutes ago, and it was a blast. It's always a blast there, and the food is terrific. Uh, the drinks are terrific. And they have this year they have a number of pop-ups they're adding to. Like, oh, shit, The really? Austin Oyster Company is there tonight, and not just a bartender who's a famous bartender is there attending bar for a couple hours. And they've really, every year they, they seem to uh, up the stakes. Damn. Uh, how long is it going? Is it going? Uh, uh, it goes till Halloween. Till Halloween. Yeah, it's like a Halloween costume type thing. Oh, well, and, and they, they do go all out. I mean, it feels like you're walking into Moe's. It's, it's no, no, awesome. no, yeah. We we met you there last year. Yeah, and it was it was electric, man. It was it was it was awesome. So I uh, uh, definitely get out there, Nickel City Bar. Uh, uh, it is worth the trip for sure. Uh, so um, I guess since since we saw you last year. Um, uh, things that have happened. My my kid started reading uh, Space 1969 uh, during the audiobook, and uh, she uh, she's 16, and all she knows about JFK is to say I uh, uh, like it. she <laughs> she won't stop doing it, but but she she loved it. <laughs> That's I can't believe that anybody under 40 loves that. That's fantastic news to hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was actually thinking about it because it's before my time as well. But but like I was thinking about how so much of pop culture came to me by way of like Mad Magazine, and it was all dated because I got them all secondhand at used bookstores anyway. But that's how I learned all the jokes. Uh, most of the 50s and 60s was from the parodies of it. So totally. that's how she's learning about JFK and American Nixon. history. Well, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, this stuff, it's not like I grew up in the 60s either. I was three years old when all this stuff took place. <laughs> so it's, it's just for people who are, are, who even if you don't know anything about it, it's an entertaining story, hopefully, that with Natasha Leone starring. And what Brian is referring to, by the way, is my audio book, which is really more of a radio show called Space 1969, starring Natasha Leone on audible.com. Which is phenomenal. And I just finished, last week, huh? the sequel, Space 1972. Oh, thank goodness! Yes. I was really finish, ready. finish, finish what? So I you finished, finished writing? Uh, okay. It took me a year and a half, 683 script pages, uh, 10 episodes, and we're starting uh, uh, recording next month. Damn! Uh, oh. So Did, next year, next year, hopefully. It should huh? be out next fall, according to Audible. Yes. Damn. Do, do, do you get to be like around during production, or yeah, it's like... I do. I, I I sort of co-run the production with our producer from Audible. And we, uh, I kind of direct the, I, I did that at the Simpsons for, for many years and on Mission Hill and so forth. I directed the actors to, as it was, as if it were a radio show. And that's what I do for Space 1969 as well. So, um, uh, are, are there any particular, I don't know how much of the inside baseball you're allowed to or are interested in sharing, but, but like, is there anything that, that you had pictured that, that you needed to coach out of somebody or, or did you discover beats that you didn't know were there that, that somebody else discovered? Oh yeah. It depends on the, uh, so we have, uh, there's a great cast and obviously Natasha is the name that people know, but, uh, there's a number of other really talented people, most notably Jim Meskimen, who you may, people may have subscribed. He seems to have half a million followers on Instagram. <laughs> He's the best impressionist I've ever seen. And like, you know, people used to think that Rich Little was amazing, but like Jim is 20 times better than Rich Little ever was. And he can do like Dude, every day. Rich Little in the mud. Uh, he's amazing. And he also, he, he was the guy who played Nixon in, in the, who, the who narrator. Is, who, is, who is, by the way, I think like uh, Natasha Leone is, is kind of, the, the protagonist, but really co-protagonist is Nixon Absolutely. in 1969. And, and, and Nixon, I think that Jim, Jim Eskimen really coaxed a lot of emotion out of Nixon that we're not used to seeing in that performance. And, and, and it's necessary. It was, it was amazing. It yeah. was such a huge part of it. And, and I'm excited to have him back. And yeah, there are a number of other, a guy named Ron Raines was the guy who played Sergeant Shriver in that episode. He'd get a lot of emotion out of that character too, which I didn't expect as well. So yeah, we have a good cast of actors, most of whom will be back who reoccur. Hell yeah. And in this episode, in this series, this season, I guess you'd call it. And um, I'm hoping that they, I mean, I suspect they're going to coax even more out of it this year. It's going to be great. It's even funnier. It's even longer. And it has a lot of surprise twists that you will not By the way, coming. for folks, you know, if you have not listened to it uh, now, then please understand if what you're into is the sci fi lore, the season ends with gigantic like lore implications for this story it is it is a a, a a show that is as funny as it is weighty in terms of at least the, the stuff the universe that you are building you are unraveling a really big mystery oh yeah and it only gets well i'm not going to give any spoilers away but let's just say sure. you'll be you'll be satisfied and you'll <laughs> you'll be tantalized <laughs> there we way. go tantalized Good. the also, 
I should say that this people, people may not, this is a triple niche thing, meaning that this is why this is not, project is not on TV because <laughs> it's a, it's a comedy, it's a science fiction show, and it is a retro thing about history. So that's three niches and yes. you can't have that kind of thing in TV, but in audio books you can. And the, also people who might be scared off by just the nature of it. It's really like Futurama. A lot of people have compared it to Futurama, but in the past, like Pastorama yeah. is the people is the most common analogy that people because it has that same sense of humor that I learned to write on The Simpsons with with Josh. And it's the really I'm writing it like it's a Simpsons script or a Futurama script in that same format with the same rhythms and so forth. Uh, yes, it, it is really, really, really funny, and everybody should go listen to it. And I would like to talk more about it, but I would rather talk to you about the uh, Chicken Big Mac. <laughs> because since we hung out a year ago, I have followed your food influencer uh, uh, journey, and I very much enjoyed it. I think that you are a very, very even-handed and good judge That's of, kind of, you. Thank of, you. of uh, uh, fast food influencing. And you did something that normally you're pretty kind with stuff. In fact, I'm from Florida. You you went and had a public sub, chicken like tender that. sub, and you were very yeah. complimentary about it. I'm like, all right, this guy's is Bill shooting straight. Uh, but you were not. You were you savaged the chicken Big Mac. I posted this yesterday, or, or yesterday, yes, and it's gotten more. It seems to be my most popular post of the year. And I wouldn't say it's really savage. It's a very honest, even-handed review, which gives it a basically a C minus. You know, and I'd say this is the thing. I think you said bland as shit or something like that. I did not use the word shit. There's okay. no profanity on <laughs> no my profanity. account. Very rarely Sorry. is there profanity on my account. I, I, I think I said it was blandness on a bun. There we go. what I said. All right. And I think the thing about it is that the Chicken Big Mac, yes, I see. The Chicken Big Mac came out only like two weeks ago. And I have only <laughs> seen, I have only seen, I don't, I don't want to say that it's terrible. It's not terrible. It's fine. It's, a, it's adequate. As people have said, like I have. Okay, let's just say people who follow this stuff. Yeah, uh, you may know Dennis Lee, who is the he was a, a, a extremely big f uh, fast food I mean, food guy for, out of Chicago. He said it was boring. Yeah, uh, Chef Mike Harris, who was on, who was extremely online and is the former head chef at McDonald's, gave it a four out of ten. Okay. So I'm not alone in thinking this. Um, this is an underwhelming product, and and correct. I think your your argument, which is that. McDonald's already tried to do Big Mac sauce as a McNuggets dipping sauce, and it was bad because you need a tangier sauce to right. go along with the blander tempura well, blend. Right. It wasn't necessarily bad. It just didn't light up any. It doesn't. It didn't flip any switches. It's exactly. Not, it's not entertaining. It's not good. And it's like the thing is, ranch is actually a pretty mild sauce, but it goes great with chicken McNuggets. This does not. And it's this sandwich is not a not like it's not like a horrific mess like. Um, the smoky bacon quarter pounder was. <laughs> this was <laughs> this. By the way, I'm sure you guys all heard in the past couple hours that McDonald's had this huge E. coli. Uh, and E. coli. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I just heard it while I was at Nickel City. This all broke, and it seems like it's big fast food news that McDonald's has never had that. I mean, that's a yeah. catastrophe. Yeah. And I just, I just also remembered. Oh, I bought a lot of McDonald's stock about six months ago. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big mistake. It's a big mistake. But anyway, the sandwich. It's fine. It just, it just, it, it's lacking in zest. It's boring, and it is the. My main complaint about fast food things that are my, is the vast chasm between the hype and the reality. Yeah, and this is one of the things that gets me. That's when I become the quote unquote Gordon Ramsay of fast food is, and, and the Burger King is the worst at this because it's always like there's a lot of online hype, there's commercials, there's all this yeah. publicity, and then the item isn't very good. McDonald's is obsessed with never providing any new. Food items. The items have they, to be. They do yes, the exact like same Bell, shit, pretty much. Uh, yeah. but Taco Bell at least has new so new sauces from time to time. Mm -hmm. McDonald's will do anything to avoid having to add a new food item. It's just re mixing stuff, and maybe if you're lucky, you'll get one or two McNugget sauces a year that are like here's the Korean <laughs> the BTS sauce, which is actually great, or the Mambo sauce, which is actually great. But there's never any new food items because of the massive infrastructure that McDonald's has. Exactly. In yeah. Um, and, and this is an example of one of those things. Although, as I learned in researching this, those chicken patties are actually new chicken patties. Oh, really? They're not the McCrispy patties. They're not the ones they have on the uh, McChicken. They're actually more like huge chicken McNuggets, which, all, which sounds good to me. Yeah. But that's because I dip my chicken McNuggets in sweet and sour sauce or, or you know, buffalo sauce. It kind of feels like they are waiting to do another sandwich with that patty. I bet like, they like, will. Like, yeah, because they, if, they, if they do that patty, then they're going to do something else that actually... Because like they could do with that patty a 
buffalo like a sandwich that would be awesome exactly exactly yeah. Man, I could really just talk to you for like I know. I mean, <laughs> say, an hour about fast food. Like that is, I I have very much enjoyed your 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 uh, 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 your your work in that field. Thank you. And I don't even do that much fast food anymore. Actually, I've sort of transitioned into more like American American comfort food type stuff. You yeah, know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. like I only do fast food things. Maybe one out of every six posts these days is about fast food. But this thing got so much attention that I felt that I had to try it. I, I feel like that is just like a. It is a sign of trust. Like there's another uh, a person that I follow that actually does like intelligence, open source signals intelligence of all things. He's an ex army guy that does like, you know, he counts uh, how many tanks Russia has so he can talk about the front mm -hmm. in Ukraine. But every once in a while, when he, cause he travels a lot, he's like, anyway, here's a, a, a Coney dog. <laughs> I'm going to eat it. <laughs> it was a good Coney dog. I and describe it, and he's not. Uh, you know, I think that you have a a a a a, 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 a thing to to make it uh, something more professional. You have you have a, a system to talk about things in the way that you do. Uh, uh, but I I do think that the connection between the two of you guys is that like, well, I trust both of you. I trust my friend Ryan to know exactly how many tanks are going to be on the front of the Ukraine, and I trust <laughs> you to say that, hey, the chicken Big Mac. Overrated, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I I take my credibility very seriously in this realm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, do we want to uh, uh, wait? Do, do we still have any anything left in the game? We yeah, have a single question left. Oh, mm -hmm. how many points is it worth? Uh, it is currently worth five points. <laughs> currently? Oh, yeah. Wait, I check the markets again. Hit refresh. <laughs> uh, I'm double pointing it, so it is worth four points total. Okay. All right. All here right. we go. To which I knew I was co-hosting a show with a war criminal, my 10 years plus comedy partner. I've been making cum jokes with Hitler for over a decade. Your options are Brian or Justin. Good luck. There's no other thing? No other com competition here. That's me. That's 100%. Justin. That's Justin 100%. <laughs> That's Justin that is, that 100%. Is, All right. Yeah. I've Brian. been making cum jokes with Hitler has never come out of Brian's mouth, but it, I might have said it today. <laughs> All right. That brings us to a tie. Can you tell me which show it came from? Uh, if it was coming, ten night years. Attack. Ten years would mean it's probably night Great Night. No. Final answers. Great Night. I say Night Attack. Justin, you've won. The sound hey! switch. Ah, you got the yodeling hey! bullshit. Whoops, oh, wrong button. Yolo, 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 yolo. Man, I'm gonna take this shit back. The musical treasures of Switzerland. I'm gonna play it on my. Well, on my knee, I guess. I don't really have a turntable, Would you like to borrow a record player? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lick it and think, <laughs> and think about the songs that uh, that are there. Uh, 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 real quick, Bill. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, the game. Where can people go to? You can head on over to bit.ly slash na discord to suggest games, uh, help write the games, or just say hi. Yay. Thank you very much, Nathan. Uh, Brian, what did we learn tonight? Uh, we learned that uh, uh, Bill Oakley has one opportunity to plug something and <laughs> tell everybody to go somewhere. Where should they go, Bill? If you want more food discussion 24-7, go to at, at that Bill oh, Oakley on Instagram. At, at what? At that, that Bill, Bill Oakley. Oakley. At that Bill Oakley on Instagram. Trust uh, me. Uh, uh, listeners, I was where you were one year ago. And now one year on, I'm a more educated food man because I followed that Bill Oakley. And that could be you one year from today. Uh, we also learned that, uh, that, that, that finally it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it takes beautiful weather and the opportunity to hang out and eat steamed hams with the creator of steamed hams to get Justin to actually show up in studio. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back, baby. Probably, I don't know if I'll be back until... Uh, election day but wait, anyway wait, two weeks uh, two weeks uh, election is gonna be amazing yeah but we'll be there uh, show up for the election uh uh yeah i, I learned that uh uh rl stein's back yeah all right uh we, uh, we love you chat realm die in a fire see you next tuesday shine on your crazy diamonds it's been a great night come in hitler <laughs> did you say come in hitler uh, uh, what are you cop <laughs> Night attack. Night attack. Stalin says what? Night attack. I'm